Colin Murray and with just days to go before the start of the EFL season I'm delighted to say we can focus on League One with three fantastic virtual friends. Sutherland's Max Parr is here. Hi Max. How's it going Colin? All right. Good. Lovely. Loving the, loving the shot. Loving, loving connecting with you from home. Swindon Times Michael Doughty is here looking more and more like Perlo every day. <laughs> Not playing like him unfortunately. <laughs> And it's switch times, new boy, no new man. I've got to say, having a Stephen Wars here. Hi, Stephen. How you doing, Colin? You all right? Yeah, really nice. Thanks for asking, mate. Listen, Max, uh, I'm going to start with you. It's funny to to, to say to a 27 year old that this feels like a you know a, a really huge season personally, but I, I I think it really is for you. You know, considering that Sunderland has been so close but no cigar so far for you. You know, last year of your contract, a, a really key part of your career. Does it feel like that to you? It's like, come on, let's go. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, the season assigned it's something that I fully expected us to go straight back up. Um, and we lost the playoff final. And then obviously last season, the season curtailed early because of coronavirus. So I'm hoping it's fair time lucky. Um, certainly won't be any easier than previous years. I think you only have to look at the teams in the division this year to see it's going to be a real tough season but um you know obviously everyone in the north he's desperate to get back up into the minimum championship and then uh, um a club of this size is obviously fighting to get back in the premier league i was at those both those the both the afl trophy final and more importantly i think the league one playoff final i saw how much it hurt the club that day um because of that huge expectation and the size of the club as well is it important to own those and to, to really feel the pain of them in order in order to use it as a motivation because you you've talked really openly about it and of how much it hurt and how much we have to change that story yeah well personally for me i had really obviously that was the first times i've played at wembley and um, one um was a penalty shoot of defeat and then the other one was i got injured after 27 seconds <laughs> so um i've not had great memories um ideally you know that was the first time i was involved in the playoffs so it was um i was actually quite looking forward to the experience at the time um but obviously that's only it's only enjoyable when you win um but yeah it's you know it's, it's hard to get away from the fact that obviously when you play for a club of sunderland when you when you're in the northeast you realize how big of a club it is and how important the club is to the to the city it's everyone's sort of like religion the football up here um you know there's no escape from you know the, how big the club is the desperate to get back up the divisions especially you know with the rivalry with newcastle and um, being two div divisions apart um certainly you know that that's what eats away at the fans the most i think so um you know first and foremost we need to try and get out of this division um, but like i said it's it's not easy um you know, I think the, the biggest thing I've found playing for Sunderland is, um, you know, it's it's a huge game for anyone who comes to the stadium of life, and especially when we go away from home, the, the following's always so big. It creates a sort of cup final atmosphere everywhere you go. Um, so that's probably been the biggest thing we've had to, to deal with over the, the past few seasons and probably what we haven't dealt with best. So, um, you know, maybe, you know, this season, depending on how long it takes fans to get back on the ground, who knows what sort of effect that's going to have on the season. Yeah, and I think with, with Swindon time, Michael Dowdy, it's easy to forget how many games you won because it's the strangest way to to win a league title. Um, it, it was, yeah, it's like you almost have to remind yourself of, of what Richie and the, the team achieved last year and kind of in a way kind of robbed of the moment a little bit, albeit that there's more important things in football. Strange times. Yeah, I think I think it, it was really difficult. Um, obviously, all of us felt that we were kind of deserved champions, but next to sort of our um, next to our names will always be sort of that PPG asterisk. Um, so, yeah, as you said, there's more important things been going on in the world, so you just got to sort of take it with a pinch of salt, and um, and we try to celebrate it in 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 some way because these sort of seasons don't happen often in in your career, so. You know, we've taken it as 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 a sort of championship winning season, and and hopefully we can build build on from that sort of winning formula this year. 
I've been lucky enough to have a few days with Richie Wellens and um, the one thing he can never describe to me is Wellens ball. He actually doesn't like it if you bring it up. So, you know, it's the only time he ever gets a bit spiky. What's Wellens ball? So maybe you can answer that question for me. If you drop a minute here, I don't, I don't want to get dropped to talk about it. But um, it's, um, it's, yeah, he's just got a really clear philosophy about what he wants us to do. Um, you know, he's a, a very talented young manager. Um, you know, wants us to play out from the back, press high. Uh, I think we had sort of the most goals from open play in, in all leagues um, last season. So that pretty much says sort of the style that he wants us to play and, and it's something that I'm sort of familiar with now two years having been with him. One thing I will say is that um, he isn't a manager who's sort of constantly sort of expecting us to play out in bad situations. He always wants us to make sort of good decisions um, based on based on the game situation. So um, Wellens ball is, is yeah, is um, is very much a varied sort of approach and, and, and his main sort of priority is that we win football matches you look through the different atmospheres at different clubs some come with huge pressure other ones come with a lack of expectation and maybe isn't a great day-to-day -day experience i put swindon town at the moment on that list of like i'd like to turn up every day and train for this club i'd like to be involved in it every day is that fair enough yeah i think i think the project is really exciting um you know, it's obviously a, a big club historically in terms of what, what's been achieved in the past um, with a big fan base. Um, but the reality is we have sort of inherited, uh, you know, the, the, the squad now has inherited, you know, potentially um, an opportunity um, to sort of overachieve somewhat um, based on sort of the last few years. So I think, you know, we're all, we all love sort of going in every day. Um, you know, we're definitely going into this season as as underdogs, but we've seen in sort of previous years with the likes of Luton, um, sort of Portsmouth, um, you know, clubs have gone into this league and done and done really well. And, and that sort of winning um, formula that we spoke about before, the, the sort of habit of winning is something that you don't, that doesn't leave you. So so we're hoping, yeah, this year that, that we can take that momentum um, into League One and, and hopefully upset a few teams. And it's hard with most clubs in League One, League Two to actually say, OK, this is this is what you've got for the season because we, we don't have the bigger gap. We don't have a lot of the transfers happening before the pre-season starts. So there's a lot of TBCs, but it looks very much like it's going to be an even younger team. It's going to be even more reliance on, on youth. And that, that brings with it, if you look at some of the under 23 actual free transfers and loans, um, that brings a fearlessness, I think. Yeah, I think it's going to be a tough year for for all squads. The the sort of the trying to fit in a normal season in a condensed amount of time. Um, you know, we're quite used to it um, from last year. I mean, I, you know, I think after six months of not playing football, we're just excited to get at it. But yeah, very much so. Um, the manager always talks about the squad game, and I, I think this year it's going to be even more important um, to make sure that um, yeah, the younger players around our squad in particular, um, you know, really test on the starting 11 and, and definitely we're going to need need everyone and then of course even in a successful year when you've got a player who's banging in the goals you've got players that are performing that you know even in success they can go so there is a recovery there as well from losing big names yeah um doyler i'm sure you're um, referring to and, and a few others like um, jerry um who have moved on and you know, were phenomenal for us last year. So, um, yeah, that's a big blow um, in terms of output of goals, um, you know, but we've replaced the managers. One thing he's exceptional at is, is finding players um, and, you know, maybe sort of unloved ones or, or sort of rough diamonds. And I think he's, you know, so far really impressed with the calibre of players that we've brought in. And, um, but as you said, you know, those players are always going to be a big miss. But, um, you know, football, you can't stand still. you just got to keep sort of moving forward. Absolutely. And I think, Stephen Ward, you'd agree with me, you know, with every bit of youth you have, you need experience to balance it out, right? Yeah, definitely. At my age, um, yeah, that's something I definitely was putting forward to the manager. Are you just at 35 now, resigned to the music you have to listen to in whatever dressing room you're in? Do you just, do you now just realise, like, I won't, I won't like it and that's the way it is. It's no, it's no longer under my control. Yeah, pretty much. Um, the young lads run the dressing room nowadays, so uh, 
I think gone are the days when people were afraid to put their music on or, you know, open their mouth. So, um, yeah, no, listen, it's great. It, it, I suppose in, in a weird way, it keeps you young, obviously. You know, I'm, I'm the elder statesman in the dressing room and, and hopefully, you know, my experience in the game is, is what I can provide them. And, you know, I'll leave the music to the, to the younger lads, definitely. There's no real knowing, you know, players can play to 40, 42, 43. Other players will finish at 31. You're 35 now, so to have a new challenge like this at Ipswich Town, do you get a bit of a Carpe DM feel about it? Do you get a bit of a like, okay, you know, I'm I'm really going to make the absolute most I can out of what I what what years I've left at at this good level of fitness? Um, yeah, I suppose you can look at it that way. I think for me, um, obviously, I still feel fit. I still feel I can, you know, play at a decent level. So. Uh, you know, obviously I was out of contract um, in the summer, left Stoke. Um, I only had a couple of weeks off and I was really sort of looking for a project that excited me. And um, when I spoke to the manager and went down and, and, and saw the setup down there, you know, I could see it was a club that was built to, to be higher in, in, in the league status. You know, unfortunately it's had a, you know, a few tough couple of years. Um, they're obviously been in, in League One um, and, and, you know, the aim there is to get promoted. So it was something that definitely appealed to me and, Obviously, the calibre of manager down there was something that attracted me to the place. And like I said, at my age, you know, I'm, I'm still ambitious. I still want to want to achieve things in my in, in what's left of my career. So it was a perfect fit, really. You, you can, I think with Ipswich, I can look at them in two ways. In, in one way, there's a stability there. And Paul Lambert's still in place. There hasn't been as much flux as there's been at other clubs in terms of players leaving and coming in. You're one of a select few that's come in there. Others would say... Not huge shifts, and fans sometimes want to see really big changes come in. So, how how do you read it in the time you've been there? Does it does it feel stable? Does it feel comfortable? Does it feel like there should be a few more moves before before the season gets properly underway? Well, I think first and foremost, obviously, last year they started the season so well. I think you know around Christmas time they were right in the mix, and unfortunately they, they just sort of tailed off. So, um, I don't think they were too far away from from getting it right. So. Um, you know, listen, I think with every squad, you need to bring in a couple of players. Obviously, the financial situation and what's gone on is, is going to hinder that for a lot of clubs. But, you know, from what I've seen and, and since I've been there, I've enjoyed it. There's a lot of good young players coming through. Um, so, you know, hopefully with the experience they had last year, they'll be even better this year. And, um, you know, I'm sure the manager's always on the lookout for maybe one or two more additions. But, you know, that remains to be seen. Yeah, I think is the looking at sort of the predictors in the forums for Ipswich Town, the fans sort of see the team in, and it, obviously I'm speaking generalising here, but it, you, their predictions tend to put in Ipswich in and around fourth, fifth, sixth. They see a playoff push is is where their their heads are are, are at. Is there's probably absolutely no talk about that at the moment, Stephen? Is there? There's Paul Lambert's not, or, or maybe maybe I've read Paul wrong. I've interviewed him a few times, but um, he, much more about taking it in small stage by small stage, right? Yeah, but I think, you know, as, as the other two lads will tell you, when you're starting the season and, you know, no matter what your aims are, you, you know, you do start the season with, with a certain aim and ours is obviously to get promoted, whether it be the top two, playoffs, whatever way, you know, this club is, is a big enough club that does, you know, wants to be in the championship obviously you've got to, you've got to deserve it by, by winning games and, and getting promoted but you know the status of this club it was a championship club for i know i think 16 17 years on the bounce before it dropped into league one so you know it's, it's up to us as a as a group of players as a group of staff um to hopefully you, you know really attack this season and, and have a real good goal of, of trying to get this club back to the championship and and then go from there and, and rebuild hopefully again in the championship and it seems like an obvious question to ask to finish but we forget that League One and League Two by the playoffs just stopped so long ago. How much are you just looking forward, Stephen? Even though the schedule's crazy and there's a lot of uh, Saturday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturdays, just playing football, just actually playing competitive football week in, week out. Yeah, it's it's huge. Obviously, it was a bit different for me. I only finished um, a couple of weeks back the end of July with Stoke, so... Um, but obviously, since I've gone in, I can see how hungry the lads are. You know, they had a long, long period without playing football. Um, they've obviously come back in good shape. It's probably been a longer pre-season than what they're used to. Obviously, waiting to see when the exact start date was and so on. So, yeah, I think with, with most squads, I just want to get back out on that pitch. And I think, obviously, with the Cup game this weekend, um, but everyone will be ready to go next week once the league starts for, for good.
and I must ask you this, although it will not get used just to finish, but just for myself, how hard is it on an international level to have everything paused? Because we were we were sat right there. We we had the the Euro playoffs, Republic of Ireland in one semi final, Northern Ireland in the other, ready ready to go, and then the breaks put on that as well. So there's there is the, that to think about as well. That is a horrendous gap when everything was you know managers changing, players at different parts of the season as well. And that has been really just an ultimate suspension, hasn't it? Yeah, and I think, listen, it's difficult enough, any sort of football stopping, but, you know, for the likes of Ireland, you know, Scotland, Northern Ireland, you know, Wales, players like that that have, you know, internationals in all sort of levels, you know, I think the bigger nations, obviously, it was a bit different that all their players tend to play at the highest level. So it looked like their seasons were going to be, you know, finished. But I think, yeah, it's really strange. And obviously, lads are coming back different pre-seasons. You know, obviously, Ireland are away now for a couple of Nations League games. And then they've got the two big um, playoff games next next month. So it'll be difficult for the lads to get going. But, uh, you know, hopefully, they get through these these few games and get the league started. They'll be in good shape come come the playoffs next, uh, next well, in October. Correct. As long as the two teams that get through are wearing green, that's all. That's all that matters. Happy team, days. Yeah. Really nice to talk only. to the three of you. Good luck for the whole season ahead, whatever it brings. And here's to the fans coming back in slowly but surely. And it's starting to feel like normal times again. Best of luck to you all. all right. Cheers. Thanks, Colin.